Welcome everybody to the Monday, November 7th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. I call the meeting to order. Uh, I am Philip Cantor, the current chair of the Select Board. Next to me is Chris Waldo, and next to him is Erica Goldman. Uh, first item on the agenda is vote to approve the minutes of November 1st. I thought they were great. Anybody else? Yeah, what's happening? All in. All right. uh, motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. There's three warrants. Um, payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $28,862.01. Payroll warrant in the amount of $114,329.98. Accounts payable warrant in the amount of $316,683.98. I did look at those and I've already signed them. The accounts payable warrant is larger than usual because there was a $220,000 to Warner construction for road materials. Mm -hmm. So that everything else seemed in order. The, the documents are awaiting your signature over in that table, everybody else. So I'll move to approve the warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Here we go. Okay. All right. Sorry, everybody, for the uh, untimely interruption of involuntary musical <clears throat> accompaniment. Um, so let's. Uh, we were on meetings. meetings attended by select board members anybody uh i met with the uh this afternoon i met with the transfer station attendants to talk more about waste disposal so that was it then right. meetings every day but nothing no formal meetings um public comments is there anybody on any any member of the public that wishes to make a comment about something that's not on the agenda. We have one here with us. <laughs> you can you can sit in that chair there. Oh, right here. So, Bill Burnett from North Poland Road, and I was just trying to get information on what the status of the bridge, the timeline, any if anybody knows anything about how long it's going to be. Um, you... Sure. Um, well, we don't know, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, so it was slated to be replaced in 2024. We're looking into figuring out if we can. And, and from what I understand, the problem with trying to bump it up sooner than that for next year with DOT replacing the bridge, as I understand it, they don't have the design and engineering even out to bid yet. So they can't, they can't design, they can't build a bridge that hasn't been designed. So that hasn't happened yet. So that kind of puts it past next construction season. <laughs> So obviously the alternative would be to try to figure out some kind of replacement bridge that could go in temporarily. That's- And that's the, the main reason I'm here is we own the property all around the bridge and I'm willing to give the town an easement to put in a temporary bridge to get this serviceable. Thank you very much, Bill. Because there's a hydrant on one end of the bridge yeah. and no mm -hmm. access to it for the yeah. houses on the other end of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, like 150 acres on the other side of the bridge that I can't access. You know, we've got a hay field up there, we've got a woodlot up there, and we're just kind of in. And, and it's also a significant expense to the town um, for the transportation, for the van service, that, that pulling kids off of a bus route and putting them onto the private exactly. van service. And that's the other thing, that's, is if this goes through the winter, I'm concerned about the safety of the kids on Main Poland Road, because that road is not a great road in the winter. And in the springtime, as we all know, mud season, that road can get quite muddy. So that's why I'm proposing if we could do something for a, a temporary bridge and keep this road open until they can do the replacement. And I have seen the preliminary designs of the bridge for 2025. From the historical commission, we got a copy of it to look at and, and report back if we thought anything was impacted historically or whatever. And it sounded, what I was reading into it, looked like it was going to be the same type of a project that they did on the second or the third right. bridge. Right. You know, just like a three month project when school was out of session and everything. And that, that worked really well. I thought that was a, a great job that they did. 
So, but the main problem now is, you know, that's not going to happen until, like you said, probably 25. You know, we're supposed to go out to bid in 24, is what I was told from the uh, power company. Oh, oh, really? Okay. So it's even further. Okay. I thought so it was supposed to be replaced be, in 24. No, and then the, the mm, construction right. would take place in 25. Oh, and, and the yeah, school we can't season. go that year, that long. <laughs> so the, there is the, the, and what I was told is that you can move up, you can move up in the heart, you can move up in their, their scheduling if, uh, if fire and ambulance and can't mm -hmm. get through. Right. So having an easement and temporary bridge. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. what I figured. So we might, we might, that might speed this process up. Well, it might not though. That's they might use that against us as a way not to speed the process up. But who knows? But it's worth doing. Yeah. And um I mean, if it didn't speed the construction up, it would still have access throughout the time yeah. frame until that was done. And I don't know if yeah. a temporary bridge would be like a one-lane bridge with street lights, you know, to right. stop and go. Probably. which we could all live with i believe but i know it's not going to be very feasible through the winter months yeah go the alternate routes right right exactly and well, there's a lot of elderly people on that end of town yeah. for yeah. ambulance purposes and you're you're adding even going main phone you're probably adding five to seven minutes travel time just response mm -hmm. time right and that can mean a lot if someone's yeah. in dire need I have spoken with Chief Baker about this to see. I, I don't know what the process will be yet because I haven't heard officially from DOT, but um, my understanding is that if we can prove the hardship, which I don't think will be a problem, be a problem yeah. so. to prove, um, yeah, that we can get bumped up. So I can't tell you how grateful we are for your offer. I think that's yep. a wonderful solution. Our family's been here since 1781 and wow. it's, it's our town, you know, and yeah. I want to do whatever I can to keep this process going thank, along. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure we'll be taking you up on your offer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, least, least but not least, I'm, uh, I'm up for saving $20,000 per van <laughs> that we that we need. Sure. So that's the only the only problem I see is what expenses are going to be to put a temporary bridge in. Does that have to come out of town monies or would that be state monies or <sighs> You know, that, that's probably not a cheap process. Probably not. Um, I've been told that it was voted at a previous town meeting to up to 300,000 something right. for replacing the bridge. I didn't see the money in a fund somewhere. So my assumption is that we have not borrowed it because we didn't need to because the state said that they were going to replace it. But it sounds like we still at least had the authorization. I'd have to talk to our accountant about that uh -huh. and Jan, but and I didn't know if there was any like the COVID relief monies, if there was anything available that through be, ARPA, yeah, yeah, could be put in towards mm -hmm. this. Um, yep. That's the yeah, that's a potential as well, I suppose. But uh, you know, I, I, I know that the state has all those temporary bridges just sitting up against a wall somewhere that they can just take yeah, it. yeah. I saw a whole bunch of them down in the Deerfield yeah. State Highway Garage on one sixteen. Right. That's not. That's of course that's not our district office where. <laughs> Lanesboro or oh, something. Lennox, Lennox, Lennox. Lennox. Yeah, Lennox yeah. yeah. But it seems like someone could yeah. be able to pull some from one district to another or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a high priority. It's an, it's an emergency. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. So, um, I have a question. Oh, oh, so sorry. Oh, we can't hear. You muted? Uh, oh. You just remuted yourself. You were you were there for a second. Uh, You're good. You okay. <laughs> um, we live on North Poland well, Road as well. Is there any chance of like shoring up the little bridge that's at the Bullet Estate since that road is getting used now? It just needs to be filled in. There's three giant potholes. Since there's cars going over there, is there a chance that it's going to be maintained for the winter? Because usually that road is not plowed all winter long most of that road can i answer that yeah most of that road is in the town of ashfield that big pothole would be the town of ashfield yeah so i didn't know it because it was either the town to caught. contact ashfield and that road is not plowed in the winter there's no place to put any snow uh, uh, yeah i know it's feasible because the banks are so steep on each side i'd yeah. love to have it open in the winter <laughs> i i was told immediately that that was not an option yeah i don't didn't inquire as to why yeah we we did we did discuss that as an option but unfortunately it doesn't seem like that's going to be a realistic option so yeah. 
just because it's not a, I don't think it's a safe road to travel in, in the wintertime. I think the buses, it, it would just be oh, no. very, no. very buses bad. don't go on that road. No. Yeah. yeah. But as a, you know, as a detour or something. Yeah. I don't think it'll work. It makes it a five minute detour instead of a 30 minute detour. <laughs> Speaking of detours, are there going to be any signs put up directing where the detour is supposed to be? I just spoke with um, Ron Sweet about that. And the problem is that some of the roads that would norm you would think to use as a detour, see, they have bridges of a very low weight. Uh -huh. So I'm not even sure, he's not even sure right now where he could put the detour signs. Mm -hmm. um, I know yeah. you've got the sign board up down here in town. Yeah. And yeah. but we've had so many cars turn around at the bridge at the end of the farm driveway. Right. And right. So I just didn't know if they were going to put anything for like Main Poland Road or yeah. If that's their I don't even know what their detour is. My sister was talking to the state engineers or the bridge that day when they're yeah. up there. And they were trying to talk on Waynesburg Road to South Asheville. And that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. I guess there's no no real route right at the moment. There's no official detour route yet. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the one that's that commercial vehicles can go on. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, I don't know what other choice there is really. Right. And the other thing they were saying is all the Google Maps or whatever lists North Poland Road as being closed in the winter months. And that all developed when the Bullet Estate was sold yeah. and the trustees reservations, they Petition to have the bullet road listed as closed in the winter months. And yeah. lo and behold, they didn't do that, but they did the North Poland Road. And it's been that way for 15 it, years or whatever. Yeah, I think it but, says from October till March. Yeah, and that's what the state highway was going on. Oh, right. this road is closed in the winter anyways. And Debbie said, no, it's not. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was, you know, we, we knew that that road was, that that bridge needed work. Um, but still, of the ones that were in that in our area that were that needed to be done, that still ranked lower than some of our neighboring towns. I think Ashfield had one that was higher ranked than us, and um, Colerain had one that was higher ranked than us. And it turns out that ours was worse than anybody's. Who could it? I don't know. The state does those inspections every year, though. Right. And for it to go from you know, 10th worst in the county to closed, closed <laughs> yeah. in one year. Yeah, I know as you're probably aware, there's been wooden cribbing underneath that for eight or 10 years that they right. engineered and had the highway department put in underneath that. So um, it's a mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, at least we set money aside for it last year. So that's, yeah. that's one golden, <laughs> it's one silver lining. Um, but all right. So thanks, Bill. Okay. Thanks. Well, yes. Thank we'll you very much. And and yeah. yeah. So actually I should say that, um, what we will do is, you know, of course we sent out the alert and for anybody listening to this, if you didn't get the alert that it was closed, that means that somehow you're not in our system correctly. So please go onto the new website and sign up or let me know and I'll make sure you're in correctly. But we will be, as soon as we know things, we'll post it on the website, but we'll also do it as news that will go out through the select board, general news and highway. So that if you're signed up for those alerts, you'll, you'll be notified automatically of everything that we know. Okay. So. Right, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Any other public comment? Unfinished business, none. Oh, somebody said our music is back. Really? We don't hear. I don't see any now, though. Okay. Hopefully, it's not this person. <laughs> well, you know, if it keeps happening, we're just going to keep shutting down and restarting. <laughs> All right. Um, new business, Kyle. You with us? I am indeed. All right, Kyle. <laughs> Welcome back, Kyle. Thank um, you. So we're here to take the vote on the animal control officer being contracted out to the sheriff's office. And uh, here's where I say that 
you know, we, we took our time to really, really try. And I can honestly look everybody in the eye and say, we really tried to fill this within this town. Um, I can't imagine posting it and the advert anywhere that we hadn't. So, um, and uh, which brings us back to you. So we, the, our, our, the attempt to fill it within the town was not successful. And uh, we are, we are going to vote to sign the contract with the sheriff's office. As long as that still meets with your approval, Kyle. It's fine with me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if I understand, we're going to take a vote and then you're going to have to go back and reach with, you know, consult with your superior uh, chain of command or whatever you consult with. And then. Um, yeah, so. Um, it's so it's a, as I mentioned before, it's a two-phase system to join in. Um, one, I need approval from the sheriff's office before we can go anywhere. We already have that approval. The next uh, layer of approval, after, if Conway votes tonight that they want to join in, if that's an affirmative vote, then I will uh, convene a meeting of the advisory committee, which is a representative of all the current member towns. Um, and then they can vote uh, then they get the chance to vote that yes, Conway. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, goodness. Oh, we, 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 we have kicked him off. All right. I know who she is, so that's fine. <laughs> Someone has nothing better to do tonight, really. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of things you can volunteer for. Oh, we got a know. committee for you. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> At three or four committees. Okay, so if somebody comes back, I'm just going to stick them in the waiting room. Because I don't see a thing yeah, to right. remove them, but yeah. at least... Are we recording? Yes, we are. All right. Kyle, I mean... Okay, we know her. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Jonathan's going to have to do some splicing for us yeah. when he gets back from vacation. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so yeah he was you were explaining kyle about going back to the town's voting yes yeah. so so basically uh with an affirmative vote tonight i will um set up and convene a meeting of the advisory committee which is made up of representatives from all the current member towns and then they will review everything and vote yes or no if conway can join if i'm not anticipating any issues there um, because again, the more towns, the better off all the towns are financially. Um, and from there, uh, Kamala just signed the contract and we'll be good to go. And I would anticipate um, getting it done this week might be hard with Friday being Veterans Day, but at the very least, probably a meeting at the latest, either Monday or Tuesday next week. And then after that, we're good to go. All right. And this is a three-year contract for signing? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, so. Um, Did you kick him out or? I put him in the waiting room. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know who it was. They haven't said anything and too bad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> right. <sighs> okay. Um, so does anybody have any more questions about animal control officer? Don't let that guy in. <laughs> I can't even see it. In, oh, come on. Whoa. Oh, for crying out loud. Wow. Oh, no, we're getting seriously. <laughs> this must be like a robot. This can't be one person. <laughs> what if that's their song? <laughs> this is their, you know, and they're just their trying to get out there. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Tell you right away. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know, you got to admit, Kyle, we, we we do have the more more entertaining meetings than the usual town. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> crying out! <laughs> I 
I yeah. got my finger on Forget the mouse. animal control officer. Kyle. We, need, <laughs> we, we need a Zoom control officer. <laughs> Maybe just like sure, screenshot it for me next time he shows up. <laughs> okay, so can we can we take a vote or, or anybody? Yep. Yes. All right. So I'm going to move to approve that we sign the contract with the sheriff's office to be the new provider for Conway for animal control officer services. I didn't even get to it yet. I second that motion. <laughs> and this is for a period of three years. It is. Mm -hmm. it and is. the note and should it. reflect that we did try very hard to find a local person to fill this position. Yes. And yeah. yeah. We did. And we I, did. I, I did speak with Kyle, and we're going to put into the contract that comes back um, the start date right. and the amount that's prorated for this fiscal year, and then it goes to 2025. And yeah. yeah. So you seconded it? I don't I did, yeah. Oh, that's you, Adam. Well, I could get bummed out. <laughs> Do, am right. I sending you out? We we have we have a motion okay. and a second, and I uh so we'll call the vote. All in favor. Aye. 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 So we have we have agreed we have we have agreed on our end. So it's all up to you now, Ka. All right. I will uh send the emails that I need to send first thing in the morning and work try to get that I. Uh, next being your scheduled before the end of this week or like i said the latest monday or tuesday next week and i will uh keep in contact with you guys as we move forward thank you so much yes thank you no thank problem you. have a wonderful evening i hope the uh rest of your uh meeting is not <laughs> as entertaining as the first yeah, you <laughs> have. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks have a good night All right, next, the press release for the community outreach meeting. thought it was our, uh, just the address should be a little bit more accurate than zero Shelburne Falls Road. Well, you know what, uh, if plot, you prefer- The plot of land between South Shirkshire and Shelburne Falls Road. Right, what, what I'd prefer to do is just forget this and just post and send out as a press release the legal notice that they send to the abutters and just, that has the map, that has everything and they can- Fine, you know. sounds good. Um, because it's getting late. It's already, yeah. I don't even know, you know, we'd have to do this tomorrow. No, to... <laughs> you didn't say that. Um, <laughs> all right, motion to approve of a press release, press release as we just set forth for the community outreach meeting on the 14th for um, a proposed marijuana establishment. Said meeting to be at the Town Hall right here at 7 p.m. on November 14th, live and by Zoom, both. Second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Two unanimous. All right. Discussion and possible vote on whether to continue to proceed with the hiring of a transfer station manager and an additional cost to the town of an additional 12000 a year. So the reason... Uh I'm no, it's not costing us anything more this year. And right. it it's still, so it's, it's still in. It's okay. That, no, that's I, my point. So, um, but it, it it would not cost us anything because that money is already in the budget. Correct. However, um, as was brought to my attention by another, um, don't, just relax. No, uh, I just no, wanted to make sure so, that it was um, clear. Uh, um, <laughs> as all. was brought to my attention by another uh, town employee that the way that we have gone about this process is sort of contrary to what we tell other departments to do, just in the extent that the budget that we pass at town meeting um, isn't just a top line budget, that if there's money left over in a specific line item, it can just be spent in any way that the department manager sees fit. We've all, we're trying to impose budget discipline throughout the town in each department so that each line item actually means what it says. And that, that when the budget is approved at town meeting, that that's the budget. And if there's monies that are left over, those monies get turned back to the town. And if you wanna do something else, then, you either wait to the next town meeting or you do it in your special town meeting. 
Um, but the, and so in this instant, because we it, the the position was not really author is not authorized in our budget at town meeting it was not even foreseen at that time. Um, that the way that we're, be, but because the money is still in our budget as a top line, uh, we're you know we're we're going ahead and doing this. But it is, if it was any other department that would have come to us and said we want to use some of the money in our to, to do a, you know add a staff or change a staff whatever, we, they would have been told town meeting, and so we should have I don't know, I mean I. It's late in the thing to do all that. The thing's been posted. There's a hiring committee. There's applications that have been submitted. Um, I kind of, I, I'll take, the, I should have thought all along that like the rules that we set out, for, you know, good for the goose, good for the gander. And the rules that we set out for others really should apply to us, even though we set the rules. But, um, but that's, so I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of not real. Not, not, not feeling real good about the process that we have gone through to get to this point. Um, I don't really have a serious objection with the, the, the thing itself. We, do, we need help. It's not, the thing is a monster. <laughs> the, the transfer station is, 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 a difficult, is, a, is a difficult thing to manage. So um, just by its nature. So, um, so that's, I don't really have, you know, this, I don't know that I really have an, an action item. I don't, I, you know, potentially we could do a motion to reconsider our previous vote and put it in the town, the, 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 the special town meeting warrant, but, um, but we wouldn't be asking for any money because the money's already there. I, I, but it's when, when you see like the, that every year this comes up that there are departments that are you find out that have spent money on things that were not authorized at all by town meeting or discussed with anybody that department just had extra money because they save money in one way or another and and it's true in the schools too this is there, there's a culture of like an annual rush at the end of the budget year um to spend the money and i'm trying to like that's not I'm a little confused. So we have the money because we save the money. Because why do we have the money? I put in to the transfer station budget this year the same line item amount that was in the Board of Health budget. Right. So I being, you know, this was wait a minute. I, I'm trying to remember when the switch happened. No, it must have happened before the June meeting. Yeah. So I just, having been my first year with this, I just moved the exact amount over. And then when we started talking about this position, I actually tried to figure it out with our, our treasurers, say, can we actually make this work? Could I do this in this fiscal year? Because I think there, there was enough money voted in that line that we could make it happen. So we figured it was, and so that's why we went forward. I went forward. For one fiscal year? Right, but so it's not increasing the budget because that's the amount that was in there from before for the salary line. So next year wouldn't be any different. You see what I mean going forward? So it's not, and that was part of the issue with having it, the reason why it had to be an internal promotion as opposed to an outside hire. An outside hire would be another person making that amount of money for that amount of time, but this one would be a bump up of a current employee and we figured the difference we could still cover in the budget that was already there. Okay. So. So it's still coming out of the salary line. Correct. It's not like, you no. know, we're saying we have this extra money left over and now we're gonna buy, you know, for stockpile paper clips or something. Right, right. That's correct. But some, some, I mean, yeah, all that is true but it's somewhat less than the crystal clear transparency that we aspire to. Um, but not, uh, no, not even that, not transparency is the wrong word, um, but. But that it kind of sets a precedent that, it, you know, you can, that's what it sounds like to me you're saying, that it sets a precedent that anticipating you're gonna have this leftover money, you can just decide to shift it somewhere else that wasn't approved by town voters. And even, even though this does still fit within that line items, I mean, it, but still, um, 
we uh, when every year we go through this process when we are discussing the budget um, mm -hmm. with other department heads and um, we find out that stuff has been spent on things that just were not well, authorized and within with contemplated at the time the budget was put together and so so just to be clear if there were something where they were doing a shift where it wasn't actually in like salaries and expenses are two different and you mm -hmm. can't shift between right. that so that's actually set um there are with the expenses there is a lot of shifting between line items mm -hmm. um, which just kind of naturally occurs and that one of the reasons i like to track the budgets really closely is so that and have it all be posted in the exact line it's supposed to be is so that the next budget year you can look at it and say we underspent this we overspent this what are the reasons and let's mm -hmm. see if how to create the budget for the next year um so i mean i agree with you about process i think i was trying to figure out how we could get this position as soon as possible because i see the need so um you know but and, and i don't think that anything would necessarily be different at at budget season next year because it would be the same amount of money well the so, thing is though that what i'm really going to be keen on that because this is sort of an experiment the way i see it to see whether this is a solution um, or part of going forward, whether it will be part of the solution, that it has to be, um, there has to be some noticeable difference. So and that, in other words, this has to work. Well, if it doesn't work, we're not just going to automatically redo this. So I, I can understand that. I do want to say that the noticeable difference will really be on my end, because this person will be doing a lot of liaison work and the making sure everything's, that's the whole purpose for it. Um, I mean, I, I was actually writing up the, trying to write up the questions for this and it's this position. The reason I had wanted to create it was to have a liaison between myself and my office select board and the transfer station. Um, because let's face it, I'm not there all the time. So I need to have like one person that I can say, by the way, level and just one rather than having to get information from all four or, you know, plus the two on calls. Um, and then also to make sure that that person is the communicator between the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the companies that do all the polls for all the materials, just so we know that, not that there's been anything wrong with the way it's been done. I mean, the, the people who work up there have been fantastic. They've done a great job. Um, so I'm not, it's not because of that. It's just so that I know that I can go to one person and get all the information that I need. So, right. So, so, so in other words, you're not going to see a notice. I'm trying to make the I point. See. You won't see the I, difference. I see. I see. Other than my hair not going as gray, I don't know what difference <laughs> you're going to see. <laughs> um, not so. So, with all of those qualification qualifiers, still, um, this is something that we're going to take a look at. This is not just going to be automatically rolled over into the budget. We're going to take a look at it in six months when it's time to put together our annual budget, um, or sooner. But that, um, you mean you'd vote to do away with the position? Uh, I would if it's if I'm not convinced that this is a, the way to go. So, so um, not that it's like a probationary hire or anything, but that this, if this doesn't, if this doesn't do as advertised, then um, we won't. We'll, 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 we'll try to do something else. Other than that, we can move on to the next item. That's okay with everybody. There wasn't really a vote. Um, um, we're waiting for Ron to get here. Well, yes, yeah, he's okay. at the other meeting, so he can't get here to the last. All right. but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, review of and vote on the articles in the special town meeting warrant. Which one is the, the um, pay as you throw? So you need to return. That's the last like, one. I mean, that's why the last one, Article 11, it just says to see if the town will vote. Yeah, yeah, because I, I didn't know what language to put oh, in. That's there. just as good as any. Well, and if we want to have that discussion before we vote on the rest of these articles, or is that, I mean, just... well, there's also, um, we don't know what the finance committee is doing about. Right. 
these either. That, that's why that, that we made no out. sense for us to meet separately and yeah. understand what they're doing. But we have to close out the warrant, right? Not tonight. We, we can I'm hoping that because we couldn't close it out tonight because we don't have the recommendations from the finance committee okay. yet. All right. So you do you could just discuss these all tonight and then next week come back and vote and close. I just I put vote on there just in case there was a vote. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay to vote on a few of them if we can just cross a few out. Art, so, uh, article one. Well, article one, I still have into some of these I have into town council. <clears throat> um, and I didn't want to do the final review until article one already went through school council. So right, but sure. you had asked for the last sentence to be last two sentences to be removed. And I just wanted yeah, to that's true. I did make the language. Last two sentences are pretty plain. So, so I'm just saying there were some that with comments that I sent right. to town council that um, we're going to have the abbreviated, you know, voter guide to explain all of this in plain English. So even if this yeah. isn't totally, yeah, you know, readable. All right. Well, then basically, let's just work on the um, the modified pay as you throw language then. What you got for us, Chris? So not many adjustments to what I sent last time, because like I said, the meeting I had with the um, attendees was today, and it was mainly to discuss, one, how they felt about those recommendations, and then two, um, how to handle bulk waste. Um, so I still need to write up uh, recommendations for bulk waste, um, but the consensus was pretty fair um with the written language i had for the stickers and looking forward with that um you know they offered their recommendation of uh what they thought would be good for town meeting as well and it was the same that we had discussed it should be based on the price of the sticker and how i'm sorry the price of the permit and how many stickers you get per permit so i think those should be put it on I did draft up two things here if you want to look at. One was language for the warrant, which is what town council had suggested, and that was just a motion for, um, because as I mentioned, if this goes on, well. Yeah, that, I mean, that's. So, I mean, that, that's part of it. So, this, just to. to this the language in the warrant is going to be that the town meeting will be recommending to the select board um and town meeting is also a select board meeting so we can vote um, on the spot to accept the recommendation uh, but basically this is not um it's not binding what's the word, what's the word there? um it's not binding it's a it's a referendum not a directive yes correct and this is a referendum article and um because cer certain things just we're not going to be able to accept we're not going to be able to accept um language that says unlimited number of bag tags like for free because then what's the point of doing this at all that's um so like the and and i'm okay with just saying that Everybody just in advance that this, you guys, you that this is asking for town meetings approval, but at the same time, we need to be able to put guardrails up on that decision. And um, you know, and, and when you look at the budget and, and you see that it was just a few years ago that the transfer station cost us 50,000 a year, and now it costs us 200,000 a year, and all of it comes out of property taxes except for 10,000. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, we, we just need to shift the fairness the, the, just on the just basic fairness. You got to shift some of the burden to the user of it. And when we have 25 or 30 households that are responsible for more than half of the trash in by, by estimate, um, then that's, we need to shift part of the cost to those heavy users, just part. And that part of it is, we don't really know. We, we can't really say with specificity what the exact dollar amount would be of X, Y, and Z change. We just know that it'll be shifting it in the direction that we want it to go. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So. What Janet means that she was coming with numbers to. 
the town meeting. So, I mean, I think that she said 40% generally reduction in in trash in trash is right what, is what if there's seen. a if there's a way because yeah, she had paperwork for us for the first meeting showing uh how much bulk or how much trash we have per mm -hmm. user i would like to see that again before our meeting. yeah mm -hmm. well i was going to ask how, in what way if this is going to be done in what way how will the presentation go to explain these issues to the public about why to, going to okay. show the trend of increased cost and waste disposal where that trend is going okay like phil said um showing that you know years ago how many years ago only how many years ago it was fifty thousand. um nine or ten yeah and okay. you're increasing God, what is that it's massive it's, yeah, yeah four, double digit every 400 percent yeah um and then to also show <laughs> Porter user were on the wrong end of the spectrum as far as how much waste we're throwing away for a town of our size compared to surrounding towns. So and, that's and what how we much we're at. subsidizing our neighboring towns. Mm -hmm. And in particular, the, the, the data about the, us in the town of Deerfield was really compelling that we that Deerfield's three times our size by almost three times our size by population. They only have 300 more stickers every year, right? And uh, and the 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 amount the total amount of trash we're really close to theirs, and they're three times our population. It's nuts, mm -hmm. and it's just you know we are obviously yeah we are obviously throwing out a lot of Deerfield trash. And so I guess my 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 question is: Would you? So the first one was just the motion. Whenever the select board decides to vote on doing a modified pay as you throw program. I mean, it's not, not, it doesn't specify anything about the program. So I didn't know if the select board wanted to go into special town meeting having already decided on that, or if you're going into special town meeting to say, we're looking at this and if we do, what do you want the prices to be? I prefer the latter. Yeah, I, I actually really don't like the term modified pay as you throw because we're given 104 free stickers. But that's what the modified part is. Pay as you throw is you yeah. actually pay for each yeah. sticker. That's what yeah. it is. That's exactly what, I mean, that's the terminology that yeah, DEP uses. So it's not straight pay I as you throw. Be, I would be okay without labeling it at all. Um, you could call it a waste reduction program. That's better, all right. actually. That is good. <laughs> um, yeah, so my idea, again, is to have the, the limitations um, and then the town to vote on um, the what exceeds those limitations and what the cost should be. But vote is and make a recommendation. So I'm, I'm not yeah. comfortable with like, oh, recommendation. To take, yes. <laughs> you know, the price for a toilet or, you know, to get rid of a refrigerator. The town. I mean, right. I feel like you should be able to set the prices that yeah. make sense knowing what the budget looks like. So, and based on surrounding towns to make sure right. that we're not getting yeah. traffic back and forth because, oh, this town is cheaper. I'm just going to go try to drop it off there. So, that's a big part of it. So, were there, it, article itself, were, was there a range of uh, the, um, permit that you wanted to put in there or we you, you know the lowest would be ten dollars okay <laughs> and the highest would be 50. i would say so okay perfect which is still cheaper than most towns around us mm -hmm. and then so the number of bags would do you want to just say it would be either 52 or 104 um yes i'm comfortable with that And talking to those guys, there's different ways some people throw out trash, not just bags, mm -hmm. but apparently barrels. Yes. So I'm going <laughs> to rewrite the language to include those as well. Right. So with the barrels, what I figure is because people shouldn't have to put it in a bag if they don't want to. At least that's my yeah. opinion, because it's more plastic you don't need. Mm -hmm. And since we have stickers, I'm assuming that it would be the transfer station attendant is handed the sticker for the barrel as it's dumped. I don't know any other way to do it. Uh, 
yeah that was one thing that was brought up is that in um, winter some of these stickers actually might not stick to the bags but what I said is they hand you the bag and the sticker and throw them both out at the same time. Um, but again, I'll, I'll write up uh, more language to it to cover everything. Okay, so then the board was going to, we're gonna put this on the warrant is article 11. Um, and then after this, meeting, then the board will discuss voting to approve the implementation of a waste reduction program. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. I did have a, a longer discussion today too with Jan, just so you know about how the whole permit sticker process can be redone so that we're real sure who has what permit sticker and how the bag stickers will get sent out. Mm -hmm. And Jan, I mean, is going to help with that as well. So. Yeah, um, there's been, there's been, a, uh, yeah, this is, I don't know, I think we are the last town in the county. Not Correct. To, yeah. And I'm fine with being the last town in the county to do stuff. But <laughs> uh, in this case, I'm convinced by the data that it's not fair and we are, we are subsidizing our neighboring towns um, because of the way we do it. And it just doesn't make sense. I really, really dislike subsidizing things for the town of Deerfield. Yes. <laughs> so that's going to be put off too. So now we're just waiting on Ron. Uh, well, I don't know if you wanted to discuss some of the other articles on the warrant, like um, if we needed to discuss the 37,000 for repairing the transfer station cap, that was an amount that that's article five. All right. So we do have to repair it. We don't have a choice about it because the landfill, as you know, is sinking and it's a real hazard. So this was an estimate from Ron about how much it will cost us to repair. In this that's the estimate, Ron? Mm -hmm. They're, well, they're going to be doing most of the work. So that's his material, labor, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It would be outside labor, outside of town employees? No. That he'd be super? No, no, no. No, well, internal we labor. Paid, we already paid for town labor through the budget. Right, but they're going to have to do this on overtime. They don't have enough time in their day with their regular to put it in there. And, so, well, we can ask Rob when he comes. Yeah, I mean that, <laughs> as well as how long it would take because you can't just have a transfer station shut down for right, right, extended mm -hmm. period of time. It's, right, we're paying overtime. That's pretty much prevailing wage, and we could just go and contract it out for the same price. And probably not, but um, I will say that my understanding is when it was done, I don't know, five or so years ago, this is exactly how it was done. Same. Well, I'd also want to ask him because if, if, if we do go forward with that and they're doing all that work there, I want to see if um, one thing the guys have mentioned is to see if we can, uh, so when you're leaving the transfer station and you're going up that hill on the left, there's a pile of rounds, like tree rounds there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if we can clear that out and create some parking spaces. I've been asking for that for, yeah, that's definitely on the list. So if they're doing all of this, it might as well yep. see if we can Throw add that. There. there he is. Right. <laughs> Were your ears burning? <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> So we were just talking about Article Five, which is the thirty-seven thousand to repair the landfill cap. So <laughs> thirty five hundred twenty. Thirty. What was it? Thirty-seven. You said thirty-seven thousand. Yeah. So twenty-five was for the asphalt itself. Now it's based on one hundred and fifty dollars a ton, which I figured is a a price that would, it might be cheaper, but probably wouldn't be any more than that. Um, Cause it has to go out to bid. Um, Cause we don't have a bid for that, that kind of a project. 
and then uh, 10,000 was for the work that the highway would have to do up there. Like remove the old black top and um, fill in. Uh, is that because it's all overtime? Yes, it would all be on overtime. That's probably a minimal amount of money, though. I mean, compared to the gravel. Uh, excuse me. Remove all the black top. And we it's did, a pretty good size area. It's 100 by 70 that we have to tear out. And we did this how many years ago? Well, we did only small patches, but it was about four or five years ago. That we did uh, probably a 20 by 30 area. And then uh, there was probably two areas about that size that we did. <clears throat> Any other questions about transfer station landfill cap? Uh, do we have an estimated timeline for a project like this? As far as when or basically how long would the transfer station be at a commission for? Well, I don't think it would be at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, if we added uh, four parking spaces on the hill, leaving the transfer station where those tree rounds are. Up on the home. Mm -hmm. How much would that be extra? And would it have to be all asphalt or could we do gravel? No, it have to be gravel. Okay. Um, but it's the tree removal. Well, the trees are removed. It's just the rounds right there that we need to get rid of. So, right? Oh, I mean, I took a photo of it. Yes, yeah, the firewood that's been sitting there for years yeah. from when they had a wood burning stove. Oh, so, so you just want Yeah, I just want right. Just so, want the wood removed. Originally, we had talked about when Carl about knocking that hump down as much as we could. Oh, no, that's for coming in so people cars can get past, which would be great. <laughs> if that could happen too, that'd be great. Oh, I know that uh, we tell, I talked about Carl about doing that. Um, but that meant taking a bunch of trees down. Yeah, that hump too. is one giant tree root, really. It is a huge tree root. It's a huge tree that's leaning into some power lines also. So, <laughs> I mean, it might need to be taken down anyway. I'd have to look more at the yeah so that's the area i'm talking about yeah so i know trees are I'm, gone but there's the stumps yeah. and stuff still there right yeah so, mm -hmm. so we just yeah, got to remove those stumps and, and just oh, yeah. throw in some gravel yeah i don't know if you'd need a retaining wall on the back end so the gravel doesn't shift no right me because all you're talking is enough to fill a 20 foot right right you know parking area parking yeah i was hoping we could kind of direct people who are in the mall to those no that's what i'm saying yeah mall, yeah. Pa mall, mall, mall parking, parking will be yeah. right there yep to avoid clogging up the actual transfer yep. station mm -hmm. yep. all right so you want to talk about the rest of the highway department um warrant article or you want to go to warren brook road what since we have residents here I we well, it's kind of one and one, isn't it? Because yeah. <laughs> the issue with Warren Brook Road is chipper. also why we need the funds for the chipper and the. Uh, no, that's not. That's not true. <laughs> um, what happened is we removed a bunch of trees. We did all the brush chipping there. There was some huge logs that we had. I had an agreement with the landowner to, he said hey, we could put him on his land. Right. And then when I got ready to do it, I couldn't get a hold of him. Well, last week, no, the week before, the tree warden talked to him and went over everything with him. And Saturday, I moved all the big logs. There's still some smaller stuff there that we still got to move. So. Basically, all that's left is uh, stuff that I couldn't pick up with a load. On Roanbrook right now? Yeah. Okay. So all the big stuff is gone. Um, I spent Saturday morning over there doing that. Um, and now it's, I just got to go with the excavator with the plan bucket to finish picking up the small stuff over there. And it's not small. I mean, it's, yeah, it's still pretty good size <laughs> chunks. But, it's all stuff that's going on on board this property. I, I 
drove on it a week ago, but I didn't see the removal, so I'd have to. that we'll in a couple weeks okay but there's since saturday you can right to look yeah yeah so okay okay there's you've obviously been there since saturday yeah the wood the big the big wood is gone mm -hmm. yeah um i guess we have a couple of concerns if if i can speak to them go ahead um did you want to come up a little closer just so the <laughs> owl can get you? Yeah. Well, there's a chair. I don't know if we can grab this chair around here. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know what I Okay. Oh, here you go. Oh, here you go. Oh, that's the perfect thing. Yeah. So um, for the benefit of those people who are on Zoom, <laughs> I'm Susan Fenton, 901 Roanbrook Road, and Betsy Potter's here. Um, so uh, we had a couple of concerns. Um, in, and I think the town is well aware now that you can't trim shade trees without having a public hearing. So that's, you guys are all on board with that. So that's great. Remove. Well, trim too. it's trim too. Our town council says trimming maintenance is fine. Okay. That's, without a public hearing. That's where we're going to have to make a, um, some sort of a dishes decision town wide because in the law, it specifically says if it is not a, a hazard. Right. then there has to be a public hearing and that is includes trimming. And one of my last um, questions on here is, are we going to follow, agree to follow the state law or are we going to follow what town council says? Town council, council determines what the state law is for us. Um, I agree that the plain language of the law mentions right. that word trim, yeah, as you say, as right. you say. Right. If it's a hazard, and, that's something else. And, and obviously, if, Eversource can come in if they think there's it's going to take a a, a, limb, um, a line down or something. That's nothing that has to have a public hearing. But anything that's more than a hazardous trim, you know, where it, it looks like it's going to fall right on somebody's house or or other otherwise damage, um, anything other than that does require a a, a a public hearing. So yeah, I I'm I'm no lawyer. I can just say that we went over this maybe three times with town council just mm -hmm. so that we were clear and. Because after the first time when she said that, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know who I had the discussion with, somebody in, in town that sent me the law again and said, it's like right in black and white. How can your lawyer say that? And, right, and so right. as and, you and, know, the plain language of the statute controls. Well, uh, unless there's courts that have interpreted that language right. to mean something other than what the plain so language would indicate. So we could go over and see if there are any, are any court so, decisions. I don't have access to Westlaw anymore, but um, I, I mean, I, I don't know what other towns do in similar circumstances. But I mean, she, 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 she supplied that, she, she sent us an email in writing saying that that's what the, and that it, it was based on court interpretation of that clause. I'd love to see uh, if, if she could, if I could see her sites, I'd love to see it. Cause I, I just, I respectfully disagree, but um, certainly. I did actually have, if you don't mind a question for, cause I'm not sure if there would be trimming for reasons other than hazards. Of course. Oh, there, there is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, I think you did some trimming because you were concerned about the asphalt condition, right? That was one of the reasons. Yeah. So, and that doesn't constitute a hazard. No, that's that's to protect the road from because it 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 melts. It's a it hazard freezes. to taxpayers' money. <laughs> <laughs> it freezes. It it right. Yeah. So that it is a problem, but mm -hmm. certainly a public hearing might say, "Oh yeah, we understand, and that's what you need to do, and that's mm -hmm. something different." But. Um, so that was one issue. Um, so I'm glad that we're going to go the public hearing route whenever there's anything more substantial than a hazard. Um, okay. We've yeah. No, I, hey, the way everything that before this happened, um, I was under the understanding, and I had been proven. I had case documents, case laws, saying that the because we only have right of way. We don't own the, the town doesn't own the roads and we actually own one in Conway and that's over on East Guinea. Mm -hmm. But because we have um, right of way that the landowner still owns the right to all the soils, the trees. Um, so it's under, I understood it and that was explained to me that the landowner had the say of um, what happened to his trees. And that may very well be, but it was the town that did the trimming. So I guess that's where we are in a little bit of of this of, of a problem. But anyway, yeah, so yeah. it is so, it is what it is, right? right I mean, yeah, you right. know, all we're trying to do is see 
that the right pr procedures are followed going forward. And I really appreciate the fact that that you're um, in agreement on that. The other piece that was that we'd like to see happen if there is substantial trimming again is to have a more prompt cleanup of the materials. And I know you have a lot of other things on your plate and a lot to do, but you know that happened in April and it's now November. <laughs> and it was it was and still kind of is. It's still enough. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, it was a beautiful, beautiful road. Yeah. I mean, um, and it's it's looking better now that the big wood is gone, but um, just, to, just to have that be part of the routine. So if you do a trim like that, then the part of the job is like, what they what do they say? It's the job's not done until the paperwork is done. <laughs> so here, there was a lot of things that came into play this year. Yeah. One was the issue with the landowner. Uh -huh. Second was COVID. I lost help all summer long, not all summer long, but all throughout the summer, I lost my health because of COVID. So there was three guys that were out for five days each time. And then I lost a guy back in August, you know, he left. Mm -hmm. And it really does make, I'm, I'm under staffed, staffed <laughs> anyway. So sure. and and right now I work, about eighty hours a week. I, I'm not. And I'm not. I'm not challenging. Trying, how hard you trying are, to honestly. keep up with all this stuff has been very difficult. I understand, and and you are working very hard, and I appreciate all of that. I guess what I would say is, so then you have a project that involves trimming, and it's not a hazard, so it's you know a, a bigger job. Then you kind of lay it out and say, okay, well, we'll start that when we know we have the people to clean it up after. That's all I'm saying. Is it, well, we good. did, and I mean. The biggest issue was the landowner in the first place that okay. became an issue. As well. I have a couple of questions about that because when I was here in um, August, you said that you hadn't been able to get in touch with Ron Boyden right. and that there was a sap line blocking access to where the wood could be put. You didn't seem to have an alternative um, location for the wood. And now I think it's been about a week and a half we see that Ron Boyden is slowly cleaning up the sides of the road and the mess that was left by the town. Was that? He did. Ron. I see somebody had been. Ron, Ron Boyden cleaned it up. He, well, he, he cleaned didn't up, clean it he up. He didn't clean all of it. No, he didn't clean all of it, but he he's a been. Pieces. So when I, he said that he would have to pay for the cost of having it chipped if he didn't clean it up because those were his trees. Is that a new practice? No, I gave him the option when we first talked that if we couldn't put the wood on his property because it was his, that if we had somebody come and chip it, the big stuff, because we chipped everything that we could up to 18 inch. So all the big stuff, I gave him the option that if he wanted to, fun to have it ground up but no that was so is that all homeowners everybody that owns trees on the side of the road if the town trims them and leaves them we either have to clean them up or pay for the job anymore i think that was part of the issue is that the town was not aware of the shade tree law, which thank goodness we are now because we definitely want to follow the law. Give, I give Phil all the credit for it because he's the one who alerted me to it. So, so. No, you did. You remember after the historical society meeting, you came out and said, here's the story. I said, like, yeah, you were right. That, that, <laughs> that, that but, there is so, such a thing and it applies to us too. So the Roaring Brook Road yeah. issue, unfortunately started before yeah, the town no, was aware of that. So, but, but that's the reason that, Things changed, right? right? Well, for Ron. Changing, it, everything got changed yeah. now because of the shade okay. tree law. Got brought to our attention okay. that we weren't. But, but would he have been responsible for paying to have it chipped? No, if he no. didn't move it, would he have been responsible for paying the bill to have it chipped? Would he have been? No, I gave him the option of. Under the new shade, under no, no, our no. following the shade no. tree law or before? I gave him the option that, you know, if he didn't want to find a place on his property, that yes. He would have to pay for it. Okay, I didn't know that that was a homeowner's responsibility. And, and his trees. Well, 
Well, we all have um, trees that are that line the road. I didn't know that you could send that you could that that was a possibility. Because that's how our policy was with the landowner owned the trees. Okay. So see, and a lot of this come from back when I first took over, people complaining because we used to clean up trees, complaining that we were stealing their wood. Right. <laughs> so you got to you got to make a decision one way or the other. So, so our, that's actually an interesting point, Ron. Um, Betsy, weren't you saying that yes. some towns have a wood? Bank? I want to. Um, I want to. I want to know how I go about proposing to create a wood bank in Conway, a common area for wood that residents have access to. It's environmentally friendly and financially a benefit to everybody. So I want to know your tax bill. Because who's going to process that wood? No, no, it's theirs. Do you know? We have liability laws. Well, you, you're asking people to pick it up from the side of the road. You're having people chop and split wood on the side of Roaring Brook Road because you left it there. That's what they're doing. That's what you wanted people to do. How is it different if they're standing on the side of the road? Getting... Or on town property? There's a huge difference. I was curious with how the towns that in our area that have set that up, how did they, okay, so how, did they my, how did they overcome yeah, let, that? Let's find that out. How so do I go about doing a proposal for that? Well, because Lev, I think we would need to talk to the towns. I did actually, there had just been an article in the paper that listed welcome. New Salem as having one. It said it in the paper, New Salem. I was sitting with the town administrator like two days later and I said, hey, can you tell me about your wood bank? And she's like, I asked them, we don't have one. So it might be Wendell. Buckland just Buckland. got a huge grant and is doing a whole thing. wood processing thing. And, and it's all done by the labor of the highway department. Okay. So who's going to fund that when we don't have the help to do? What do you have now? Six people? No, five. You have five people? I don't know. It might be a time management thing. We have thing. 64 miles of road. Yeah. I mean, we have... what, uh, you don't think we do anything? No, I'm that sorry. That's not I'm, what I said. No. But I'm trying to think of the environmental impact and the financial benefit to people in our town as opposed to getting rid of wood that is usable to heat people's homes. And if other towns do it, I think that it's something that we could look into. So maybe we could take our wood to them. <laughs> I, so I'd like to, Betsy, you and I can research this and okay. figure out what other towns are doing, what problems they've had and what they've how they've surmounted those problems and if there's grant money available we'll do all that digging and bring okay. that back to town bring that back that to would be wonderful yeah. Yeah. that yeah. would yeah. be That's wonderful important. i was going I just to focus on leverage that they that they that they're doing it different than anybody else so. leverage leverage and berniston you said berniston you thought had i think that? buckland just buckland. got a big grant did so you see that what's what's your email betsy i'll send you right now oh here um and the other thing that um just going down the road this evening um is and I know that we talked about it last time, and I know that you're busy. Um, so I just want to just want to bring it to your attention. On the way past Judy's house toward Yankees, there are a lot of things that still need to be cleaned up, and where that dip goes, and there's trees gnarled and tangled and, and hanging in other trees. Is that Ron's to clean up, or is that something the town will clean, clean up? You're cleaning that up. Ron, I don't know why, because why, Walter, the tree warden, had just talked to him two weeks ago. And I sent him a text at the beginning of the week saying that we'd be over cleaning up. So I don't know what went on there with him. Let's say I, there was something that he wanted for wood or something right. different than where right. we No, I'm just trying to clarify because we're all landowners and if things have changed and we're responsible for paying to have, you know, I'm just trying to, educate so myself as much we as... will be clean everything will be and there's more stuff that has fallen there that um because the stuff that small stuff wasn't there when we did the trim okay. that's all fallen so Since i'll have to have another chipper come in because we'll chip that anything that we can chip we'll chip off right. just because it's not worth handling more than a couple times and i only have one more question <laughs> and that is why does our town have the policy to leave 10 foot tall tree trunks? Where? Um, Waitley Road, we have some on our road. There's some up on Baptist Hill. There's just um, the trunks. Well, the ones that 
a lot of them were done previous before me. The ones on Waitley Road were done because of the city of Northampton. Right, but we can't cut those down. Why we'll do talk we to the city of Northampton? I don't know. I got told to because they said we were out of our right of way when we were cutting the leaning trees that were over the road, leaning into the road. That's why them got cut. And they just didn't want you to cut the no, rust down. They because wanted there was I don't know if he was a resident of Conway, but somebody called Northampton Water District and complained about what we were doing over there. And so when I talked to the lady from the water district, I I said, because she complained that we were cutting trees in there out of the right of way. Right. But we were only cutting what was so I said, well, then that means you don't want us to cut. The rest of the tree down she said no but on our road anything that is dead and standing could be cut off to just have a stump like the ones up by aunties and there's a lot of dead trees there's one between aunties and our house that has so much invasive stuff growing on it it's probably twice the size of the original tree trunk um so some of those could be cleared up and cut down to yeah i don't have an issue but a lot of that stuff was done pre-me Right. No, I was I, no it's just so. a maintenance thing. I mean, now I, with the invasive that's he, species. That's the way they used to do it, was cut them down so people knew, didn't realize they were right. cutting a tree down. Are those on private property? The ones that's the one that you're talking about that's covered with invasive species? No, that's or? right on the side of the road. Oh, okay. Right between, right past the auntie's house okay. as you yeah. go up toward ours. And it's got so much invasive stuff growing on Actually, it. Actually, you know, it, it's all a matter of taste. I kind of like it. It looks like a guy. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. But there's <laughs> other I feel dead, like I'm being welcomed home. You know? But there's <laughs> other dead <laughs> ones down looks by like the auntie's house. It's, it's, you know, it's got a lot. Anyway. And they're just the stumps yeah. or, or the trunks, I guess. And it would be nice to have all those trunks taken right down. And so. Yeah, when time permits. So the other question we had was about the, and this is not something that I travel on a lot, but apparently it is something that, for instance, Gail Sullivan, her family travels on and people down on South Park travel on. The part of, of Roaring Brook after, um, after South Park, when you're heading Going back out to Whitley Road. Road. Yeah. So we'll be out there in the next couple of Oh, weeks. You're, you're going to be working on that? Okay. Yeah. Because Gail's point was that it's, it's really kind of dangerous and right. um, there's no place if, you know, especially if you're going around the curve like that, there's no place somebody comes up on you. There's no way to pull all pull over. So I'm glad to hear that you're going to be working on it. We'll okay. I appreciate mm -hmm. it, Ron. And you know, yeah, I, I, I think know that we're trying and, to find out about yeah. how all these yeah. things work mm -hmm. and is there new policies that we should be aware of as and what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. But but that I guess I just want to make sure that there isn't confusion here. The the old policy was the homeowner had to deal with it because we were alerted to the shade tree law. It's now on the town. Right. So it's that's what's shifted because maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I thought you were saying that we've changed the policy and now the homeowner has to deal with it. Well, exactly. that's what I'm asking because Ron was yeah. out there by himself. He works. He, he's a full, he's employed full time. It's, I think there was. I think know, as far as Ron and just, I think Ron and Ron. <laughs> <laughs> the two Rons, I think there was a communication gap right. there, which can happen. That's that's understandable. Yeah. My bigger concern was make sure we're following the shade tree law. Yeah. Make yeah. sure there's a public hearing. And to be honest with you, I think the town would be in better shape if you had the darn public hearing, even if you weren't sure whether it was trimming or hazard, you know, just have the hearing and say, we have to cut this down because it's a hazard. And the people in the public hearing say, oh, we get it. And then there's no controversy. So I think that would be yeah. my recommendation to the town would be deal with it like that, because then you don't have people like me coming and being annoying. <laughs> it's not annoying. It's, and it was very good for us to be alerted for sure. Well, thank, um, you, thank you for listening. To I know. Us. Thank you for yeah, having us back in. I just have to mention that I just read today an article where this gentleman was leaving stumps to be able to trim wild grapes so that the birds had food oh, in no the wintertime. Wow. There I think go. it was in the recorder today. I didn't get the recording. So today. maybe yeah, we could plant some wild grapes around those stumps. I have wild grape at my house. It's very I do too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, thank you. we'll let you know how we come along with our 
wood bank. I'm just saying it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm really interested. I would yeah, love to yeah, know because it's, yeah, it yeah. makes sense if we can yeah. manage and it. And yeah. environmentally, even sometimes Absolutely. if something does cost some money, if it's saving people that don't have money for $5 a gallon in fuel mm -hmm. and it's environmentally friendly, mm -hmm. as a community, I think our community would support that. I, I mm -hmm. think you're right. um, and, I'm you know, sure. Yeah. Okay. It's worth looking into. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank See you. you. See you. How to go at the finance committee? Did they vote? <laughs> well, I don't know. Who's the one? Usual suspect. <laughs> I can... Well, so well, are we recording? Yes, we're recording. So after all those, you you weren't here. We got bombed three times during our meeting. <laughs> anyway, well, Bitcoin, I digress. <laughs> they couldn't hook up over there. Oh, we didn't figure out how to. So I wonder if that's why you were in the bomb. No. No, no, it's a different zone. That was blank. It was no, quite it, a... yeah, it's the one you gave them. Look, they're here. No. No one tried to join this meeting. I mean, unless. No, they, they definitely had nothing to do with what was happening no, to us. No, There's no, no doubt about not, that. It was a planning board link. It wasn't this link. But anyway. Well, I'll show you the names of the people. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been. You would have been you, you can Google the one guy. Or suggestive music lyrics. He's in the yes. Urban Dictionary. <laughs> um, okay. Well, at least somebody must have recorded their votes, so we can have that for next week. For everything. Well, for the highway. Yeah. Okay. The new guy, John. Is that his name? He, I had to persuade him in the end <laughs> because they don't. They think they, I should just do what I've been doing, pushing the trees off the side and leaving. Oh, which obviously we can't. We're, do. Yeah, we're not allowed <laughs> to. Well, yeah. Why aren't we? What's the liability if we did do that? Well, my understanding from town council was the tree is ours to deal with. So putting it on the side of the road is not an option. Because that's what they're saying. Well, no. Theoretically, the liability could be enormous if there's an accident yeah. with an automobile yeah. that causes injuries because that's yeah, there because and the it wasn't yeah. there. And then, like, that's. Yeah. I, I honestly know what would happen. <laughs> I mean, and that's why I have all these issues with liability with the town because mm -hmm. the town can have awful big pockets for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, for something that goes wrong. Mm -hmm. But so I tried convincing them that that can't happen, but it doesn't work, you know, for some. So, and they're 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 banking on the town not voting it anyways. <laughs> I don't think that's a good bet. <laughs> I don't know. Um, is that anything else? We're voting these next week. Well, we can't vote them. Right. I mean, you can vote your recommendations, but we won't have the finance committee's input until then. All right. So, and if it makes sense, I, I mean, I would suggest we meet at 5.30 just yeah. because then we can be done by 7 so that we can have the community outreach meeting. Next. Start at 7. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, well, we weren't thinking we were going to have to have a meeting on the 14th when we set up the community outreach meeting at 7. Mm -hmm. So I, I was recommending that we meet at 5.30 next Monday. Okay. Just to give us enough time to be resolved before... You know, because we'll be over next door, back in our normal spot, but then we can be all set before the folks come in for the community outreach meeting. Sure. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, administrator updates. Oh, you got it. Read it. Yeah. Select remember. They get posted on, up online, by the way, if anybody's really interested, they're always on my phone. <laughs> uh, happy upcoming Veterans Day to our vets and vets yeah, families. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's Monday. Friday. 
And it's Friday. Monday's Friday. not the holiday. It's mm -hmm. Friday. Friday. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, um, Jan was absolutely correct. The Monday holidays for uh, transfer station um, for Christmas and New Year's. So we'll do the Friday before from one to six. So it'll be Friday, Saturday, and they'll be off Sunday. Saturday's Christmas Eve, is that right? Yeah. And after. Yeah. Yeah. And then when, so when the holiday's on a Saturday, you get off the Friday. When a holiday's on the Sunday, you get off the Monday. Right. So Christmas and New Year's are on Sundays this year. So Monday's the holiday. So we'll do the Friday and the Saturday. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's. that's Wednesday the 28th is going to be a very big day at the transfer station. Right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, and sorry. Um, the the date got moved. It was actually the 14th, the 17th for the meeting with DCR. For um the town forest. The ten, yes, thank you. Is that the during the day or is that an afternoon? During the day. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the time yet, but that's the day. So you know the railing at the transfer station is completely broken now. Okay. Yes. And keeps you from falling into the contractor. What's that? No, 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 no. The, the one going up to the up. yeah to the oh, recycling. The drivers keep hitting it. I, at this point, I'm I'm telling Jan, you got to ask waste management to replace the whole thing because they've hit it so many times and damaged it so oh, they many should. times. They should. I think they should. <laughs> it shouldn't they be should. on us if yeah. they're doing the damage. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yes, I'm talking to Jan about that, and Troy and folks are great about sending me pictures of what's been done and. Yeah. For the record of all the things I've hit at the transfer station, that is not. <laughs> that is not <laughs> Just keep hitting that tree I on your left. You know, it's first funny. Everybody in town has a story of things they hit at the transfer oh. station with their car. Or the okay, so on. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're good for next meeting, November fourteenth at five thirty. Yeah. And are we okay with that? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. I don't think you need to be there. Yeah, so right. <laughs> you don't need to be there because we're just. Next, next week. Did you second? I'll second that motion. Okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned.